type of red light, you idiot. The little red light on the dashboard. Half an hour ago. We were supposed to be here in ten minutes. You are the AA, aren't you? Or is that Alcoholics Anonymous? Don't tell me. You merged the two organizations. You wouldn't have to change the initials on your stationery. And you replaced all your mechanics with the covering alcoholics. Look, I've already missed the most important business meeting of the last six months. The children are waiting for me to pick them up. And if I don't pick them up, they're probably going to join a gang and get pregnant. If a bunch of hoodies and pram-faced pikeys start calling me Nan at my age, it'll be your fault. Don't. Don't hang up on me. I have paid my dues for years, and this is the first... Please. Hello? Hello? Now listen, I'm stranded. Okay. Okay, you need a minute. Well, that makes two of us. Hello? Hello? Oh, where are you, beautiful Xanax? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Don't go away on me. Oh, oh, bloody hell. I know you're in here somewhere. No. Not you. I'm in my bag. Oh! oh! Please! Come on! Hello? I wish I was heading to that other place. Well, acting like an ostrich with his head in a bin. Excuse me, but I was standing still. It was you who was barreling along without brakes. Are you sure you don't have my confirmation number? Well, uh, I wrote it on a, on a scrap of paper somewhere. Oh, oh please help. Oh. Of course I bloody well. Oh, come back. Come back. Glenn. Not you. Hello, are you still there? Oh, Wonka. Are you talking to me or to yourself? Well, only if you're talking to yourself, then you're mad. But if you're talking to me, then, well, I'm a lot of things, but Wanker, I am not. <sighs> well, you're not the AA bloke who was supposed to be here half an hour ago. Or the AA operator can't find his own friggin' asshole. Nor are you gonna smooth things over with my boss because I've just missed the most important business meeting of the last six months. Or rescue me from my snidey starving husband because he's expecting to see a roast on the table when he gets home. All my hysterical children when social services cuts them off because I wasn't there to pick them up from school. No, none of the above, sir. Wanker it is then, hmm? It never ceases to amaze me the things that people throw away, you know? Hmm? Look at these. Probably cost 60 quid, hmm? Ever since those riots, you know, there's been plenty of nice gear up for grabs. What do you think? Is there a payphone around here somewhere? Oh, well, that depends, dear. Are you after one that doesn't have all the wires ripped out or is free from the Russian prostitute cars? If so, I'm afraid you're out of luck. Well, there must be one somewhere. Oh, I wish there were. As change is something I have plenty of. Uh, so that's your pocket money. When you and I both know you spend whatever you get on booze and drugs. You're not going to take those dry, are you? Here. Here. Oh, suit yourself. You know, intriguing cultural stereotyping. So tell me, are you a mummy that's losing her yummy? Are you a helicopter mummy? A seagull, perhaps? What? Oh, come on, you know. You fly in, you shit all over the people that love you the most, and then you fly off again to your... To your yoga classes or your fancy shoes. Oh, do piss off. Oh, you're actually a satellite mummy, aren't you, eh? Just as you're about to land, you swallow another booster rocket and off you go. 
Well, my best guess is you're an over-medicated hybrid of them all. Oh. Here. Read this. It's no cavalier and clay, but it's good. Chebon picks up where Roth left off. Potential but unrealized historical twist. You enjoy it more than rushing to pick up those children of yours. It's the perfect read for the post-77 world. You didn't read this book. You just read the review on the back. And what's all that crap about seagulls and helicopter mummies? You spend your days watching loose women in the bus station. Absolutely not. Libraries aren't just for kips, you know. They actually let my sort in to read. And you should be proud of me. In five years, I've never received one smelly letter. And what's that? Oh, well, this lifestyle accentuates one's own natural exudation. Oh, you mean you stink? The most junior librarian is tasked with giving out smelly letters. Which says? Well, I don't know. I've never received one. They're so pathetic. The homeless? Oh, no, no, no. The, the junior librarians, dear, you should see them. Oh, they tiptoe in, frightened in case there's some sort of outburst, whilst the rest of the librarians and patrons are only hoping for there to be some form of commotion. What an exciting way to spend your day. Well, as long as I bathe and I don't have some sort of meltdown in the children's corner. Note to self, no more leaving the children alone to do their homework in the library. But it's only for an hour or so a day. The rest of the day is work, work, work. <laughs> What work could you possibly do? I was very successful until the big issue bubble burst and there was a dozen vendors in every high street. And now? Well, now. Now I'm trying to revive the rag and bone trade, but other than that, then I'll just use my skills in asking people for money. You're very articulate. Oh, God. You're not one of those poor souls that lost their job and then their house. No, never owned a home and I never hoped to. Are you mentally ill? No more than you. Touché. So, how did this happen, then? How did what happen? You know, this. Well, I thought beards were the bang-on trend these days. <laughs> you know, every self-respecting tramp needs a bushy beard to catch the food to savor for later. If cows can chew their own cud, then why can't we, eh? And it scares off those inquisitive little children. Although they might mistake me for Father Christmas. What I meant was... Why are you a... a tramp? Well, you know how some people think gays are born knowing they're gay, whilst others think it's a choice. Not that I'm gay, by the way. And not that I care to know your sexual orientation, by the way. Well, let's just say that I was born to lead an unfettered existence. Material things would bring me up in hives whilst a mortgage would surely kill me. Although I was a Queen Scout once, you know. I hope there's an apostrophe in there somewhere. I just mean that I've been uniquely trained for this outdoors lifestyle. I still don't get why you'd rather be homeless. No, homeless is such a subjective word, you know. I prefer habitationally challenged, and I can say I'm at home wherever I go. I wonder if you can say the same. No, no, no. Let's talk about you. I don't buy homeless by nature with your bushy beard and shabby clothes and obtuse theories. I might buy a philosophy graduate. Economics, actually. But who's counting? Aside from our friends at RBS and Lloyd's and Barclays and the rest of those Hermes gilded crooks that made homelessness so fashionable that... Well, I can barely get a bed at my favorite shelter. Pisses me off. Do you know what pisses me off? That woman's dog has just shut its brains out and she's pretending not to see it. Unbelievable. I'm not a dog lover, eh? Actually, I am, but like everything else, I put up with way too much. You don't have one of those teacup dogs in there, do you? <laughs> Sadie's not in there and she's a chocolate lab. Oh, adorable. With an equally adorable habit of eating other animals' excrement. Oh, that's disgusting. Mm, all a matter of perspective. Oh, well, sausage rolls, unlike dog shit, are so full of gristle and pig's hooves and towels. Well, 
that they're impervious to the travails of the trash. You know, a dog trainer once told me that in almost every case, dogs that eat shit are always female. Remember that the next time you let Sadie lick the little darling's faces. So? You know, the theory is that the mother keeps the den clean when the puppies soil it. In fact, the female dog has actually evolved to enjoy the taste of shit so much that not only does she eat from her own family, she sniffs it out wherever she goes. <laughs> to be honest, I can totally relate. Feels like all I do is eat shit. I don't mind it so much from my boss because he pays my wages. It's not so terrible from my husband, because he's a major breadwinner. For now. Well, how do you know that? Economics graduate, remember? And it's only fair I should do more around the house, but the kids always talking back. In a way, I'm glad my phone died, because I couldn't take the guilt of not being there to pick them up on the dot. Well, if it's any consolation, I'm sure your children adore you. I know I adore my mother. And it didn't kill her, you know, you being like this. Well, I still see her three times a week uh, from afar. Probably better that way as she thinks I'm dead. What? Have you got any idea what she must be feeling? Thinking you're dead and not knowing what happened? Imagine you buried in the desert on some slab in Harold Woods Hospital. Well, nature did short her on maternal nourishment genes. Well, I don't care if she's got the maternal instincts of one of those David Attenborough creatures that eats his own offspring when it's hungry. You can't blame her for your triple ingratitude genes. Well, better than micromanaging mummy ones. Uh, if it wasn't for people like us, people like you wouldn't be around. And I suppose you owe your gratefulness genes to your mother, do you? And in turn, you've handed those down to your children who adore you for all the nurturing and worrying and chauffeuring you do for them. I'm sure your mother would be thrilled if she knew you were still alive. And I'm sure she'd never approve of my chosen vocation. Beggar. Hobo, actually. It's more romantic. Oh, I thought you liked habitationally challenged. Well, habitationally challenged is a condition, not a profession. And you know something? The more I watch you so-called normal people, the more I'm at ease with my choices. Well, what do you see when you look at me? I see a beautiful woman. Oh, come on. But stress is aging you. And you can't hide your wrinkles behind a beard as I can. What is it? Is it all that shit you're eating? Sometimes it feels like the world is spiraling towards disaster. I have this impending sense of doom. Xanax is supposed to help, but on days like today, it doesn't make a dent. Slow down, dear. You're more of a junkie than half the people I know, and that's saying something. Can I tell you a secret? Well, who am I to tell? The trees, the birds, the... But you really can't trust those rats with wings, you know, no. They never shut up all day long. My husband might be made redundant, and I can't carry the mortgage of my salary. I might be in your shoes in the near future. You know what, these? <laughs> you don't have to live like this, dear. When was the last time you asked for a raise? Ah, oh, you see, that's got to change, you know. When I first started out, I'd accept anything. Pennies, monopoly money. You know, I really had to resort to some rather unsavory things just to survive. Such as? Oh, uh, dine and dash, palming waitresses' tips. I nearly tried the fake valet. I hadn't renewed my driving license for years. But then, then I reformed my artful dodger ways and... Instead of asking for whatever you can spare, I'd ask for 10 quid and, well, they'd usually scoff and after a bit they'd toss me a pound or two, which was probably what I was after in the first place. So you mean ask my boss for more and then negotiate? Very good, Grasshopper. What else? Mm. What's your current mortgage interest rate? I'm seven and a quarter. Oh, ridiculous. You must refinance immediately. You uh, probably qualify for a low rate, and you must hop to it. How do you know all this and I know nothing? Listening. Interest rates are a hot topic of conversation these days, and 
My pen handling skills are straight from Branson's book. One of my finer trash picks. You're very resourceful. And you deserve better. So keep your eyes open. Keep your mind clear. Nothing gets past you. Nobody takes advantage of you. You become an impenetrable fortress of self-confidence and self-awareness. Speaking of awareness, uh, what did you say your name was? Oh, I didn't. My birth name is Robert, but my sister thought it funny to call me Robin. <laughs> and now she calls you a little cuckoo. <laughs> well, she tweets all the time, but library computer time is too valuable to waste. And yours? Jessica, you won't believe this, but I think this is the first time I've had an interesting conversation in years. Here, yeah, yeah. Sad, really, but sweet. I think if I heard my kids say, time for telly bye-bye one more time, I think I would have killed one of those cute little puppets with my bare hands. Or, or you might read about me in the sun when I kill my next-door neighbor for telling me one too many times how bright little Nigel and Sophie are because they've figured out how to electrocute moles with a burglar alarm. There's nothing more fascinating than covering shib on to eating shit to interest rates to, well, molar side. You know, life to me is like one big game of Sesame Street. Not one of these things is like the other. I thought you were gonna say life is like a box of chocolates and then we'd be done, because dump wisdom hurts my teeth and makes me wanna hurl. Well, you know, must run, places to go, people to see. Tony's our Frisco diner for the post-lunch pre-dinner buffet. What? Uh, the skip in the alley behind the restaurant. Oh, never mind. But today is a very special day. Well, how comes? My book reading group is midway through remembrance of things past. Mm, very literate. Uh, well, not really. If uh, we were in France, we'd be reciting it in original French text. But then if we were in France, I uh, probably wouldn't be homeless. Well, how do you figure that? Oh, the French have a much better social safety net. <laughs> Can I ask you a favor? Of course. Can I give you a hug? Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's like you're right here. Oh, finally. If I come by this park someday, will you still be here? Home is where the park is. <laughs> now let's see if the grasshopper has learnt anything from the master. Massive traffic. Oh, you poor, poor dear. Do you want takeaway from Tony's or have ten quid? Hmm? What do you say to a nice bucket of ribs and a Timothy Taylor? Hmm? I did not have to take her money. I was teaching her a lesson, and I resent what you're implying, sir. Pass, please. Uh. Couldn't resist, could you? Um, may I just say that my intent was entirely noble, but in answer to your first question, no, not so much. There's ten quid too much here. Yes, keep it. You need it more than me. No. I don't. And keep the pills. You need them more than I do. <laughs> and don't forget to call your mother and tell her you're still alive. That's an order. And so the grasshopper becomes the master. <laughs> 